This is Chapter 19, Family-Centered Care of the Child During Illness and Hospitalization. One of the big issues for uh, kids is separation from the parents. And separation anxiety usually begins about six months. And it, there's three different phases to it. The protest phase, this is where you're trying to get the child off of the parent and they're clinging and screaming and you just can't. After that, they can go into the despair phase where they aren't crying anymore, but they just look depressed. They, they're they not happy. And then the final stage is detachment. This is not common. Kids usually don't get here, um, and we're not too likely to see it at the, hosp at the hospital. But this is where they look like they've gotten over the um, separation, but they're not really happy. They will smile and play, but there's a shallowness to it. They make relationships with other caregivers, but again, there's a very shallowness to it. Um, this is something that takes a long time. This is not something that happens quickly, that detachment phase. So we usually just are seeing the protest phase and sometimes the despair. And here's a child trying to get back to its mom. And here's one in that despair phase, just not not happy. So losing control is a big problem at the hospital. So what's the big problem for an infant? Well, they're trying to develop trust, and we interrupt that development of, of trust with the caregiver. So we need to make sure their needs are being met, that they have consistent care, um, and not just feeding and diaper changes, but that they're getting held, they're getting talked to, they're getting the sort of loving care they get at home. And the more we can stick with their home routines, the better it is. For a toddler, they're developing autonomy. So their loss of control at the hospital is going to be those things that they're trying to do themselves that now we can't really let them. Um, so the ones we can let them do, we should feeding themselves, uh, picking their clothes, but there's a whole lot of things we can't let them do. And so the more we can stick with their daily routines, the better. Toddlers love rituals. We may um, tell them to put on their pajamas and they say, no, I have to brush teeth first because they like doing it the same way each time. It's reassuring to them. Um, Toddlers in the hospital will often see them regress. So a child who wasn't using a bottle will want a bottle. A child who was potty trained will start wearing a diaper. That's fine. Just reassure the parents that's normal. Negativity and temper tantrums are toddler issues always, and they're going to be even more of an issue at the hospital. Toddlers love to say no. They say no to everything. So the best thing is to not give them yes, no questions. Ask them if they want juice or milk, because there isn't really a no option. Um, and temper tantrums. They'll have ten temper tantrums, so the recommendation is make sure they're safe, but ignore the tantrum. And if we can get them to take naps and so they're rested, those things will help prevent the tantrums. For preschoolers, these kids are now an initiative. That's what they're they're trying to learn is to start doing some things on their own, moving away from the family a little bit. But they need to know the family's there um, for safety, that they can come back. These kids are totally egocentric. They cannot put themselves in another's position. So you can't say, what is the boy in the next room thinking? They don't know and they really don't care. They only care what how something is going to affect them. So telling them someone else didn't cry just really doesn't matter. They also have magical thinking. So they don't really understand that thinking it won't make it happen. So if they're mad at their sibling and wishing they'd go away and the child, the infant goes to the hospital, we could have a toddler or I mean a, a preschooler thinking it's their fault. Uh, the other issue with preschoolers is they often see a hospitalization as punishment. They believe that when you do 
good, you get rewards, and when you do bad, you get punishment. And so if they're at the hospital, this is, in their minds, this must be punishment for when they lied or they took that candy they weren't supposed to. So make sure um, we deal with that and, and we tell them not that this is not punishment. So all of that falls under Piaget's pre-operational thought. Uh, they can't be reasoned with. They aren't logical thinking yet. So um, we do want to reassure them that their thoughts didn't cause things to happen and that this is not punishment, but logical logic is not something they can use yet. Preschoolers do love imitative play, and that is a way for them to work out their anxiety. For school-age children, they're, they're striving for industry. They are busy. They're trying to be independent and productive, and they're involved in lots of things. And then we put them in the hospital, and they are bored. So trying to keep these kids busy so they don't get bored, because they're not used to sitting around doing nothing. Um, so get them to the playroom, get books, get their favorite movies, get video games, get something for them. Something that school-age children, they now understand death and that death is permanent, so they may fear death or abandonment, their family not being there with them, um, especially if they feel like you know they're sick and they could get worse and they could die, they don't want to die alone. They also are very afraid of permanent injury. The thought of maiming their body is very scary to them. So keep them busy. And items from home are very comforting. Both the, the preschool child, and this is probably a younger school age child, they like their items from home. It's reassuring. Adolescents are learning identity. They are trying to become independent, liberated from the family. The peer group becomes very important to them. So in the hospital, they may be more worried about separation from their peer group than from their family. Adolescents, are, they act mature one day and immature the next. So they can respond with anger or frustration. Make sure you're giving them information, but not condescending. They don't like being treated like children. They want to be talked to um, at an adult level. So common fears for children, fear of bodily injury and fear of pain. Uh, that pain may make them hesitant to ask for pain medicine because they're afraid of what we're going to do that may be painful in order to give them pain medicine, you know, like giving them a shot. So that fear of of injury and pain that can start in childhood and persist into adulthood. Effects of hospitalization on the child. When a child is coming to the hospital, they are frightened or worried from the time they know it's going to happen until they're discharged. It's not just during the hospitalization when they're actually there. So the more we can do to relieve that anxiety, the better. So having them work with child life, see the rooms, play with dolls with the same items they're going to have on their body is really helpful. A child's concept of the illness is more important than anything else. If, and what they're imagining is probably far worse than reality. Um, they may be quite mature, but if they're picturing something terrible, that's what matters, not how mature or immature they are. So things that can make uh, hospitali hospitalization more difficult for a child, well, those difficult kids, right? Some kids are easy, some are slow to warm up to new situations, and some are just difficult. You put a difficult child in the hospital in you know, the setting where they have no control, and they're going to be difficult there as well. When you have a mismatch between the parent and the child, if you have a difficult child and a very um, easy compliant parent, they're going to have trouble supporting and, and helping each other cope. Um, the younger the child is, six months when that separation anxiety starts up through five years is much more of a stress than it is for an older child. Males, in general males, experience more stress, more illness. Um, sorry guys, but 
males just aren't as hardy as females. Children who are below average intelligence are more stressed in the hospital uh, because their functional age is probably in that six months to five year range. And then if there are other stressors going on, uh, if there's frequent hospitalizations, if they're homeless or live in poverty, if there's some stressful event going on at the house at the time, that is just going to compound the stress of being hospitalized. How do parents respond to the stress of hospitalization? Well, there's a huge variety. Some are going to have disbelief or anger or guilt, um, especially if they weren't able to prepare in advance. They may ask you the same question over and over. Just keep answering it. Some are going to be afraid, uh, you know, especially if the child's illness is serious. We cannot promise them a good outcome. We can promise them this is a great hospital. People know what they're doing. The doctors are excellent, and we will give the child the best care possible. We can promise them that. We can't promise a good outcome. Um, some are frustrated, and they will look on the Internet, or they will keep asking every nurse until they get the answer they want because they're wanting somebody to tell them this is all going to be fine, and maybe it's not. So, don't again, don't give false reassurance. And then some are going to be depressed um, or, again, feeling guilty. I should have been there. I should have, you know, print for prevented this from happening so that guilt kind of leads to the depression so let's get the social workers involved if you're seeing any of that how do siblings react well um, if they're used to having a playmate at home all the time they can be lonely they can be worried about them and fearful for them often they're angry uh, or resentful or jealous the sibling is at the hospital with the parents and they're getting stuck home alone so they feel like that the sibling is getting all this special treatment and they're not getting any and then they may turn to guilt because they're angry and jealous and now they feel guilty or if you've got that uh, preschooler who's thinking they're the cause of the hospitalization because they wanted the child to go away you can also have guilt from that so I liked this picture I think this girl's a bit ambivalent that the brother's in the hospital and she's not sure if she's feeling sorry for him or feeling jealous of him so altered family roles that jealousy between siblings can become kind of a family role especially if this is a chronic illness and the parents change how they treat the children the sick child can take on that sick role where they kind of are more passive than they need to be and accept care and then the sibling becomes jealous and it becomes a very just dysfunctional pattern um, so that can happen so we're going to prepare kids as much as we can for hospitalization using the nursing process. Assess what do they know, what do they need to know, what are they worried about. Make a diagnosis and a plan. How are we going to prevent uh, the, the stress they're going to go through and that loss of control. Let's implement that plan. Is that whether that's letting them play with dolls that have the same thing, letting them have a tour of the hospital and let's evaluate. Did it work? And here's a, a child in the hospital. I think they're uh, preparing her for something. So the more we can minimize separation, the better, especially for those kids under five, which means we're doing family-centered care. Parents are not visitors. They are our patients as well. We need to do everything we can to help them be comfortable because that is going to make the child more comfortable as well and bringing things from home. You'll see at the hospital kids wear their own own clothes most of the time. A few are in hospital pajamas, but not that many. And they have their special pillowcase or blanket or doll. So those home familiar items are very helpful. 